I'm gonna get this. I'm gonna get this going. Can you hear me now? Requested you. Am I here now? Yeah. Am I, I on? You. I hear you. Can you hear me? Still, can you see me? Fuzzy, still, I can see. I can barely see you, but it's fine. How about now? It's not fine. Got, if I'm choppy, it's no good. Am I still choppy? I'm All inside right. now. Wait, let's still choppy. Still choppy. Still choppy. Less choppy. Less choppy yet. All right. Mm. Am I less choppy? There you go. Wait, uh, it's clearing up, sort of. Is it, uh, is it clearing? Is it clearing yet? Maybe. Okay. What we're gonna do? I'm gonna let you go, and then maybe if you come back, I want it to it'll be cleared up. There you go. So everyone else, while we're waiting, he's on his way back. <laughs> hey, everyone, say hi in the comments for me. Oh, this is gonna be good. All right, he's back, guys. All right, we're just waiting for Anthony to connect in five, four, three. Hey. <laughs> hey. Is, is it working? Is it working yet? There we go. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm a little clapping. Oh, you're about to clap. Are you about to clap for the Texas? I, I, brought, it, I brought it to <laughs> Texas, man, because I I, I'm in a coffee shop in the middle of uh, Hallsville, Texas with my children. My wife's outside with the, the barista and my dogs. Um, That's why you're an MVP. <laughs> I'll be, I'll be getting, I, I, seriously, I got it. I was like, well, do I take this in the bag? And I was like, yeah, I, may, I made it, it came in the mail. I promise I would take, I may not make it super loud because okay. I don't want this. There's nobody in here. There's nobody in here, so we'll make some noise. Anyway, how you doing, man? How's it going? I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. I'm even better that you're here now. <laughs> good, 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 man. Yeah, I, I am right, just... I'll... Huh? Let's roll, how, how bro. Oh, we're both talking at the same time. How was the drive there? It's good. We stopped, so we went from uh, the Bay Area, which is uh, uh, Walnut Creek, to Lake what, Barstow, Barstow, California, nice. to Lake Havasu. From Havasu, we went to New Mexico, like some like Gallup, or Gallup, Gallup, New Mexico. From New Mexico, we went to Amarillo, Texas. Amarillo, Texas, we went to Anna, Texas. Anna, Texas, we went to. Um, Jackson, Mississippi. Was it Jackson? No, Mobile, Alabama. No, we went you to Shreveport. You want a Beyonce World Tour. I hope Beyonce World Tour. <laughs> we did. We went to Shreveport, Lafayette, Baton Rouge, New Orleans. Then oh we went to God. Mobile, Alabama. Mobile to Pensacola, Florida. From Pensacola, Florida, Jackson, Mississippi. Jackson, Mississippi to Shreveport. Shreveport to Hallsville, Texas. Oh, my God. And we're still moving through. We're going to make it back. We're going to be in Anna, Texas tonight. Awesome. Well, I'm going to go ahead and do a quick intro, and then we're going to get right into the interview, and I'll talk to you back to your family. Say bye and say hey. <laughs> He's like, right, man. <laughs> hey. There we go. Hey, beautiful people, success mentor, Dante Jakeworth, and I'm back with another video right here on Nation's Believer TV. <laughs> now, if this is your first time tuning in, I need you to make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Mm -hmm. Make sure that you like this video, mm -hmm. and make sure that you are commenting down below. Mm -hmm. Because tonight, my special guest is... Tell me who you are, sir. My name is Anthony Trucks uh, from the San Francisco Bay Area, former NFL athlete, American Ninja Warrior, father of three, husband of one. Better be, right? And uh, an adult dude, man. I hang out. I like, I like to serve the, the world with my, my life and, and whatever craziness comes out of my mouth. Hey, yes! So I invited Anthony on tonight to talk about shifting in uncertain times. Yeah. Mm, it's uncertain times right now, so before we talk about that, Rick, I'm going to ask you the same question we ask every single guest. What is your story? Oh, my story. My story is, uh, is a difficult, weird one. So I grew up, uh, first was given into foster care at three years old. So the first part of my life was just, I was, I didn't matter to my mom, right? So I went through a crazy situation where I was like beaten, starved, tortured, abused, odd stuff. Uh, is she ready to go? Okay. My mom, so my wife wants to get out of here in a minute, which we're going to go to, we can go in a minute. Uh, and then from there, man, I got adopted into an all-white family. I was with them in, uh, from 6 to 14 years old. So I'm the only black person in an all-white family. And then at 14, got adopted, played football for the first time. It was really bad. Mom got diagnosed with MS, but post sclerosis was tough. And then I kind of checked out a football foster kid. I'm like, I'm not supposed to be great. And then had this hunger, desire to actually be. Oh, no, we're losing him. Oh, he's back. Okay, there you go. Yeah, you're back. You're back. I'm back. Um, so yeah, then I went off to this tangent trying to figure out who's Anthony, how's, how I fit in this world. And so what I ended up finding out was, man, I had a good, um, a good desire to drive me better. So I got better at football, ended up getting a college football scholarship to play at the University of Oregon, met my, uh, my high school sweetheart in high school. She went to Oregon with me. 
had my oldest son who just came in here. He's 15 now. I had him when I was 20. Uh, and then from there, man, I ended up playing in the NFL. Had a great situation there. Uh, it was difficult. NFL stands for not for long. For my shoulder, my third year. Came home, lost my identity, had no idea who I was. And if you haven't noticed yet, me shifting and shifting times is a weird thing of my life. We're not even done with the story yet. Came home, opened the gym, had no idea what I was doing, broke my life, neglected my wife, had two more kids. I had these two people right here. Uh, messed my life up, man. They're, they're, they're all floating around their tablets. And then, uh, man, I lost my marriage, uh, lost my family, almost lost the gym a couple times. But I started figuring out how things would work, how I could be better. My mom passed away in 2014, a really big catalyst for me to figure out, like, how do I make something great of this crazy life I got? And I got in this big tear to, like, share my personal story and find out what's my unique superpower as to why all this craziness happened. And I found that my, my weird thing is I'm great with navigating different parts of my identity and shifting with shifting moments of, of life when they're either proactive or reactive. Because most of the time it's proactive. I want this. I'm going to change, right? But now is the time which shows you how important it is to understand how to do it in a reactive world. Yeah. I didn't want this. How do I handle this, though? And that's my weird specialty. So I teach people how to have what's called an identity shift, uh, to be able to upgrade how you operate so you can be, do, and have more in your life. Yes! Come on! Come on! Come on! Do I need to do my thing, too? There you go. Come on, my, son, my son's looking at me like, what, Dad? What can you do it, son? Oh, he doesn't want to do it. He doesn't want to do it. So tell me, when you think of shifting in uncertain times, what comes to mind? Um, well, now is mean, one thing. In certain times, essentially, it's just, it's, we always have these plans, but life is what happens between your plans. I want to get this new job, and they say, no, you don't get that job. Or, hey, I'm, I'm healthy, and then you find out you're sick. Or, you know, you, you feel like you got a good base of, your, of yourself, and all of a sudden, you fall out of a relationship, or you lose your job, or you leave the military, or anything, right? And so what happens yes. is, those things are going to happen, and they are inevitable. They are the things that life throws at you. And the people who succeed are the ones that understand how to take those moments and always find the best parts of them. And so I try to give people the skill set of not, not like the whole Bruce Lee thing. Don't ask for an easy life. Ask for the strength to handle a hard one. Mm. I'm, I'm wanting people to find out, like, how do I get to the front? You, oh, is that a clicker? Is that a clicker one? That was a clap right there. That was Ooh. a high moment. <laughs> so I'm always, uh, always focused on teaching people that those things are inevitable and you want them to happen. It's not a matter of trying to find out how to get away from like, I desire for them to happen because here's the crazy thing. All those hard things in life, they're what grow you to be able to have the, the ability to have your life be great later. So if you're looking for them to, and you doubt to navigate them, then life is amazing because here's the truth. Life has an amazing plan for all of us, but we mess That's it up. Like yeah, because we're scared or like we don't know or we, we second guess and then it passes you by. So mm. for me, it's like, damn, but I want to get every drip drop out of life. So I'm going to go ahead and take advantage of everything I see, even if right now it scares me. You can be in that mental space. You'll kill it in life. Yes. Get so, it. Get it. Get it. <laughs> so I, was, I know that I saw one of your videos that went viral of the letter that you wrote to your son, which was awesome. Thank and you. I think that the shift that you had with your son and the mindset of, for those of you who haven't seen it, he was, his son asked him to play. He said, no, I'm too busy right now. Then came back and had to, you know, owned up to it and said, I apologize for what happened. Yeah. What That's this guy. Brought right that shift in your mind? Hey, baby. Look at him. <laughs> what it's, brought it's that shift in, your, it's, in your mind to, to even come to those words and saying, okay. Because a lot of oh, people don't have that conversation with their children at all. No, they don't. And that's the problem. I think, uh, you, people want kids to be respect, respect me, you know, but at the end of the day, you're not teaching a kid to have respect for themselves. And so I, I realized that for me, I've been that guy you saw, like I came from real places of my past. And the reality was I, I realized if I want my kids to have self-respect, which is big, yeah. I have to give them respect. And so it means mm -hmm. me go, going back and saying, if I had an adult in my life, how would I treat them? Cause my mm -hmm. kids will, they will grow up to be humans that will, that will lean on what they believe their respect should be. So if their yeah. own parent doesn't respect them, how are they going to have a spouse that respects them? Or how are they going to be in a relationship and know what it looks like? So because they know, like, hey, my dad didn't even treat me like this. Like, you will not treat me like this. It's a different sense mm. of what they'll put up with. So I, I am big on, like, I apologize to my kids. If I do something wrong, I'm like, ah, all right, I messed up. It's hard to do it. Don't get me wrong. Like, I was in a household when my mom right, was right. right because she was mom. Like, I'm right. Why? Because I'm your mom. Like, that doesn't, that doesn't make any sense. This guy's, <laughs> right, not, right, right, right. this guy's not purple. What are you talking about? Well, I'm your mom. You know, like, it's not real. And so I've always been in a space with my kids of like, man, I, at this point now, like, I want to make sure they realize, like, I'm not infallible. I'm not yeah. perfect. Question authority to a certain extent, because when you do, you grow.
Yeah, go ahead. Oh, that's good. Those are my dogs. Those are my dogs out here. It's the Tonka trucks and the Toby trucks. Oh, the, the, as soon as I'm outside. I love it. I love it. So I do. I want to know, like, being a, ooh, are, you, are you there? It's, it's cutting out. Your signal's cutting out. Oh, no. Come back. <laughs> oh, we'll just bear with me. Everyone's tuning in. How you doing? Good. Good, 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 good to see you. Okay. I made it. I okay, made you're it. back. All right, you went away for a second. <laughs> there, there's my, it's Toby and Tonka. We're outside. We're going to roll it out here, so we're going to go on, on my my cell phone service, but it should work just fine. Okay. All right, yeah. sounds good. So I would love to know, you were raised by, you said you were adopted by a different family, and you also have uh, children, or, uh, children of color right now. In this current political climate, how are you shifting in your parenting? Man, uh, it's different. Am I breaking up to you too? No, you're here. I see you. Okay, good, good, good. No, it's different because, uh, no, I'm pretty sure I'm breaking up. I'm going to go back inside. Uh, okay. He's like, got to make sure this message is clear. <laughs> Baby, <bye. laughs> Hey, Michelle. <laughs> there you yeah. go. You're coming back. To there you go. All right. My wife's, my wife's in the bathroom. We all have to leave here. <laughs> so we may have uh, issues. I love it. It's all good. It's real life, real oh. time. <laughs> oh, they're, close, they're closing the coffee shop, too. So, um, no, so the situation, can you see me at all? Yeah, I can see you. It's just a little oh. fuzzy, but I got you. Okay, cool. So you're like spinning face, but it's okay. So uh, okay. for me with my, my kids, like, it's a different situation. I'm having deeper conversations with my son because we both grew up as a token black, I would call it. Like I grew up in the only mm -hmm. black person, all white family in an all white environment. And then, yeah, I see it. And then my son is now in a private school and he's in the same environment. So we're, we're having these discussions on like, you know, like what does it mean to be the position we're at? Like how society shaped and fitted? Does, this, mm -hmm. like, does, does systematic racism exist? And like, I've seen the deeds of that houses where they say like, can't rent to a black family. There's like, mm -hmm. a reason why all the amazing schools don't have to be in black you know, communities. And so having him see like, hey, we, we operate a different tick. We have to, because I want to be successful uh, mm -hmm. in a higher level. But, but don't get it confused. Like, we don't live in a world that it makes it easy for us. And it's naturally a little bit harder. It's, it, there's a, it, you don't have representation at levels above, you know, the police very often, right? It, it's a, I, I always, like, think about it, son. Why is it always an article on CNBC when a black person graduates from law school? Why, you know, it's, why is that special? And, and essentially, I, I'm explaining to him, like, this, this is the reality we live in. And I'm glad our world's finally saying, hey, like something's a little bit off. We've got to start working towards something because that's what helps things get better. And so I'm, I'm hoping that the future of our world does move to a, a, the area where like, for example, I have, I have phenomenal like, uh, you know, gay and lesbian friends. And, yeah. and the, the movement that they've went hey, through, I, like, yeah, right? <laughs> hey, family. <laughs> oh, um, they're close. I got to get out of here a second. But what happens is like there was a movement that eventually was like, hey, it's not okay to call anybody, you know, derogatory names because of what they were, were living through. And mm -hmm. so, are you, can you still hear me? Oh, you excited yeah, me. Hear so, you. so my thing was like, and now it's a faux pas. We're like, if I'm in this room and somebody on the other side of the room says something you know, that is derogatory, I will speak up. And, and it's mm -hmm. like, it's a different thing, right? So I see our society move into a new space where I can almost see like, it's not gonna, it, they're not gonna even have a black person in the room, even have a white person say, hey, you don't say that kind of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And that's, I think, a change of the society. And so I'm having my son have these conversations like our world's going to be different because then what happens is you don't perpetuate for generations the, the racism because, well, Uncle Billy Joe's not saying anything anymore. So grandson, mm -hmm. you know, grandson Sean's not hearing that conversation. And so it doesn't it doesn't perpetuate through the generation like it has. And I think it slows the racism in terms of it like, down. It doesn't mean everything changes overnight. It doesn't right. mean it's going to be fixed. But at right. least the conversation dies, and now we get to see, like, wow, like, there's some real amazing humans if we just give them a chance past their skin color. Well, that's true. That's true. We're right about time. But I would love to know, what has been the hardest lesson for you to learn that took the longest to learn? Uh, hardest lessons was forgiveness. I mean, I grew up by my mom giving me away. My dad never, you know, being present in my life. Like, it's just a lot of different things. So at this point, forgiveness is a humongous one. My wife, you know, she, we had a situation where she had an affair and it broke me. And for me, I had to come back from that situation of a realization like, man, there's a lot of people in this world that are hurting other people, but they're not doing it intentionally. They're doing it to serve themselves, unfortunately, and we get hurt in the back end. So understanding how to forgive someone when they realize they're really in a tough place. That was a tough one, but man, it changed my life from what I'm able to do now. Yes! 
Okay, are you ready for rapid fire questions? Okay, Let's rapid say fire yes. questions. Woo! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is your favorite book? My favorite. Oh, I got a lot of favorite books, man. But let's see, I see a, a one I really had a change on me was The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. That was a really good early book for me. Yes, that's a good book too. And you know, that's another book that you really loved. And well, I think someone mailed it to you, though. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I did see it. I did. I didn't bring the book, but I did get the book. <laughs> nice plug. That's nice plug. Awesome. <laughs> Favorite movie. Favorite movie is Avatar. I'm a. Uh, I'm a sci-fi guy, man. It, it used to be Stargate, then Avatar came out, and then Avatar is amazing. It's the best movie ever made, in my opinion. It's so dope. To the extent that people, <laughs> yeah, people watch that movie and they got depressed afterwards because they wanted to be one of the Na'vi. Like, you know you did something right when people were at their doctors feeling sad because the movie was that right. good. Right. Kind of like Wakanda, because I'm Wakanda forever now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. And what do you see when you look in the mirror? Uh, man, I see greatness. My family thinks it's jokes, but well, I see I need to shave, but yeah. I see like, uh, I see greatness in the making, if not greatness now, man. I have to see that. It's the only way I make it real. You, you can't create what you don't see. Oh, that's good. Oh. And I, yes, I my, to, be, to be audacious. Yes! Come on, Papa! Get it. <laughs> like to be audacious means to be that, that, Yeah. That. What does audacious mean to you? Audacious, uh, man, means means bold, and and you don't care about anybody else's perspectives. You just do what you do. Woo! Yeah, yeah. No, 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 yeah. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Tell me my wife is pissed. Line. How they can raise, you can raise oh. offering with the you people. You know what we doing? That? People. <laughs> How can <laughs> they find yeah. you online? Oh, Instagram here <laughs> at Anthony Trucks or uh, AnthonyTrucks.com. There you go. Go ahead, y'all. Go check out Anthony Trucks, y'all. Thank Come on, check it out. Your time today, sir. Yeah, no All problem. Definitely. Time. Happy, happy to come on and chat. I apologize for the the, the Wi-Fi issues. This is my real life. It's We're in the good. band rolling we love, now. We like real life. <laughs> love it. Love it. But well, thank you. Take care. Enjoy the rest you of your too. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.